What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in another video, man. This one's going to be about uh, tithing. A lot of people have asked me about this subject. You know, Mark, make a video about it. And I know there's like some false teaching. There's or a lot of false teachings behind uh, the doctrine of tithing. And I want to make this very clear uh, why, you know, why it's a law and what the law was really about. Okay. The law was for the Levitical priests. Okay. A lot of these people in these churches, I'm not going to say all, obviously, you know, but most majority of them, they're not, they're not the Levite tribe. Okay, so that right there eliminates 99% of these churches. Okay, number two is when they gave tithings, it was a form of food, vegetables. It had nothing to do with actual money. Okay, uh, it wasn't it had nothing to do with you know you know dollars and none of that. It was literally about food, you know, water and veggies. Okay, we don't see that about when people get out tithings. And I also want to I want to add some balance to this too as well. Okay. Um, if someone is pouring into your spirit, if someone is obviously being led by the spirit of God, someone who's obviously anointed, someone who's obviously doing the will of God, and who and and that person has that person has been a good shepherd and has helped you out upon your walk, got you got you a uh, relationship right with Christ, got you keeping God's commandments, got you living a life that seeks repentance, maybe even baptize you. Okay, to, to, uh, you know, was, you know, having sound doctrine, there's nothing wrong with giving. You actually should, you know, help those people out because they're pouring into your spirit. And as a shepherd, as a teacher or a preacher, whatever, whatever the case may be, we go through a lot of spiritual warfare when, when we make these videos, when we get out there and preach. We go through a lot. You know, the devil doesn't like that we're helping people get right with God, get right with Christ, you know, give their lives to him. So he tries to take us out. So we don't we don't, you know do the will of God and we don't go out there and win out souls for the kingdom, you know? So we, we, us preachers, we go through a lot of that. But the thing is a lot of these preachers and these pastors, they're using uh, witchcraft, you know, a form of manipulation, which is witchcraft to get you to don donate to the congregation. You know, they push fear. If you don't give to this church, if, if, if you don't do, if you don't give us your money, you're not going to be blessed. Uh, they'll make, they'll make long sermons just for, for the sole purpose of you to donate to their church. And that's where they go wrong. That's when they go in their error. You have to understand though, I understand. I get it. A man with understanding is of an excellent spirit. Hey, these these pastors, these churches, they gotta they gotta pay the bills. They gotta pay the light bill. They gotta pay rent. I get it. I understand that. But when they solely make their ministry and or their you know the sermons about you, I, you have to give to me. You have to give. That's where I go wrong. That's that's where the error is at. And and you know now I know some people might disagree with that. I personally stand on what I believe. A lot of these churches, there's no truth in it. A lot of these churches, they're going to take the mark of the beast and they're going to influence you to take the mark of this beast. A lot of these churches also are 501c3s. Okay, they're fine. A lot of people don't even know what that is. You know, a lot of people have no idea what that is. That's why when it comes to certain agendas that they push on the masses, these churches, they don't speak against it because they'll lose their, they'll lose their tax cut, they'll lose their tax break. Okay, so always keep that in mind, guys. Um, when Whenever someone is fear mongering you when someone is uh manipulating you when someone is making you feel like you're wrong because you, you're not you know tithing you know to their congregation i would leave that church immediately i would leave i would leave it immediately okay uh now there is also a, um there was also i want to talk about this too as well when it comes to you know you know who should i help out like i said guys if someone is obviously being that best for you or someone who just who's helping you out your relationship with god or not or, or sorry not or not someone who's um, you know, like I said, getting you to, you know, follow the Bible, getting you to live a life of repentance, stuff of that nature, right? Then I'm not saying that you shouldn't give to that, uh, that individual, okay? Or that congregation, I'm not saying that, okay? Uh, but I want to add some balance to this too as well, okay? Uh, if you want, because everyone says that if I title, if I tithe, if I, you know, if I give, I'm going to be blessed. And it's true because the Bible does say in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, the soul that refreshes other himself will be refreshed, which means that the person who blesses other will be, will, will be blessed, which is, I've been living proof of that. But I would recommend you guys, if you guys really want to give to those, to those in need, if you guys really want to, you know, sow good seeds, you know, because that's what giving is, you're sowing good seeds. Okay. Remember, he who sows this, uh, the flesh shall reap corruption. Those are bad seeds. He sows the spirit shall reap life everlasting. Those are good seeds, okay? So if you do want to sow good seeds, if you want to be blessed by God, I say go give out to the, the, the homeless. Go out in the hood. Go out in the streets. You know, start passing out water bottles. Start passing out chips or food, snacks, or, or, it, could, or it could be money. You know, start you know start helping out those in need. And I'm telling you, I'm living proof of that. You will be blessed. And now don't do this to be seen by people. You know, don't do this recording people because, you know, the Bible says that you're, you're like the hypocrites, just like how these Pharisees and scribes are. They, a lot of these religious folks are just hypocrites. Okay? They don't even, they, they, they preach the law, they preach this and that, but they don't even practice what they preach. You know, I've seen many sermons, guys, where the pastors were, tell, were like literally saying that if you don't give 10% of your income, uh, God's not going to bless you. That's not true at all, guys. That's not, that's, that's completely false. 
Um, like I said, guys, I'm make this very clear. Okay, if someone is pouring into your spirit, someone has helped you out in your relationship with God, relationship with Christ, I'm not saying that you shouldn't give to that individual. But when someone is manipulating you using a form of witchcraft, you know, uh, fear mongering you, making you feel down, making you feel low because you are not giving to that church, that's where the problem arises, okay? Um, like I said, guys, tithing back in the Bible days, okay, back in the law was actually food, veggies, you know, fruits, stuff of that nature. It had nothing to do with money. Okay. Um, now I know we're in different times and I understand, like I said, guys, they got to pay the bills. They got to pay the rent bill. Um, personally, with my belief system, I'm not going to say all churches, but 99% of these churches, none of them have truth in it. None of them are speaking truth. They're just tickling the ears. And th this is, this is the thing I, I, I call to all you people who go to church, right? But no matter what do domination, um, I, I say demonation, you know, because all just confusion. Okay. Whatever, whatever, Whatever part, whatever part of church you're in, do you see yourself growing spiritually? Do you still, do you see your relationship elevating? Okay, if, if you've been in a church building and you've been there for ten years, twenty years, five years, whatever the case may be, and you don't really see much growth, much change, I, I challenge you guys all to leave that church and you seek out God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your body, with all your might. Okay, and I promise you, you're gonna to start to see within within a season, you're gonna to start to see much growth than you ever had in those church buildings. So I feel like in these end times, guys, we gotta be seeking on God more than anybody. You know, and I'm not saying that it's bad to listen to someone, to go to church, to, you know, like I said, guys, if someone's living that the spirit of God, I'm not saying it's bad for that. I'm not saying that you just leave your church immediately. But if you see these people using fear tactics, um, you know, witchcraft, you know, to, uh, on the masses to where you have to give to them. And if you don't give to them, you know, you're not going to be blessed. And, you know, they're just using all this uh, rhetoric uh, to get you to give to their church. Or, for instance, like I said, guys, a lot of these churches, too, they're spiritually dead. The AI is taking over church. I'm making a video about that pretty uh, pretty soon, too, as well. All right, I told you guys how there's going to be prophet AI. There's going to be messenger AI. There's going to be pastor AIs. There's going to be AI in the church, and there's going to be real humans listening to their sermon. These AI robots, these fallen angels, they're going to be speaking more truth than a lot of these pastors. Okay, they're going to be speaking a lot of more truth, better sermons. <laughs> I'm just letting you know what I see. Like I said, I'm going to make that video pretty soon. But um, like I said, I don't want to make this video too long, guys. Just please understand that if you if you are in a church building for uh, years and you don't really see no spiritual growth, you're just still stuck being religious, okay? You're not keeping God's commandments, you're just playing church, being lukewarm. I challenge, this is a challenge to all you guys to leave the church for three months and you start reading the Bible to your life. I'm telling you, you gotta be on fire. I'm telling you, you gotta separate yourself, isolate for three, three months, okay? Even Christ, he went to the mountaintop alone to pray to the Father. Sometimes guys, you gotta, you know, do the will of God alone for a season. I'm not saying that you got to forsake the assembly. I'm just saying for a season. Remember, the Bible says in everything, there's a time under, under the heaven, okay? At least it's actually chapter three. Three months, okay? Now, what do you do in those three months? You start reading your Bible. You start applying it to your life because we, we know James chapter one, verse 22 to 26. We, don't, we want to be hearers and doers. We don't want to just be hearers, okay? Also, you want to start doing some prayer, getting some, some heavy prayer, okay? Some heavy meditation, meditating on the word of God. Do some fasting, do some, you know, uh, fasting to the most high. Now, how long you want to do fasting? That's between you and him. You know, you pray and ask God, you know, how long is it? One day fast, three day fast, is it a dry fast, a water fast? Is it a Daniel fast where I'm just eating fruits? That's between you and the most high. And I promise you guys, guys, you're going to have such spiritual elevation and growth that you had more than you ever did at these churches. And I know a lot of these, that's why a lot of these pastors and these like religious, they don't like me because I, I tell you guys this, I tell you guys the truth. So they don't like me to be that. And I'm, you know, I'm hurting their pockets. I'm hurting their money, which you, sh you shouldn't be bothered by that because if you truly believe in the most high and you're doing his will, he's going to supply your, all your needs and your, all, all your needs more than you ever needed. But you know, a lot of these people, a lot of these people don't have wisdom. They don't have knowledge and understanding. And the last time I was at a church building, I'll never forget. This is in 2019. The pastor went over, it was a two, it was two hour long servers and one at the, the whole hour, 50% 50, 50 of the sermon was literally about how we have to title and how we have to give um, tithe and how we have to give money to them. And, and if you don't give money to them, you're not going to be blessed. And, you know, he, he went over an hour. Like I said, guys, I have understanding. So I understand that, you know, they got to pay the bills. I get it. And I was going to give regardless if he said that or not anyways. But it's just like you really wasted an hour of that sermon. You could have be an hour of time, you know, because most people are only seeking God on Sundays. That's not even the true holy day. The holy day is actually on Saturday. That's the Sabbath day. That's the one of the commandments. Um, and I'm just, like it's just it's just so sad to see a lot of the sheep, 
they're just led astray. They don't believe the Bible. They're not really seeking out the Most High. They're seeking out a pastor. They're seeking out a church congregation. And it's keeping them in bondage, man. All of you guys who are going to church is keeping you in bondage. But it's your fault. It's not their fault. Make this very clear. You know, you have to be accountable. You got to stop being lazy. Okay, you got to start being slothful. And you got to be ready to put in the work. Because doing the will of God is a work. Having true faith is going to produce works. And that's what you, you got to have to produce. You don't want to be lazy, slothful, and just in, in your willful sin. And being disobedient. You don't want to be doing that. And I can promise you guys, I promise you guys, man, if you go six months isolation, just you and God. Okay, not saying they got not saying they got no one hit you up. You know, obviously, if you have brothers and sisters who want to, you know, you know, congregate and you know, uh get some Bible study in, do some prayer. I'm not against that. I'm just saying you just isolate yourself from most people, especially those who are of the world, especially that. And you know, okay, th this season. You know, I'm, I'm really going to be on fire for God. I'm not going to play church no more. I'm not going to be just religious. I'm not going to be lukewarm, double-minded. I'm really going to be about this walk. And, I, and God, I, I pray you lead me and guide me. Whatever spirit that's keeping me in bondage, whatever strongholds that I got, whatever sins that I'm battling with, you know, God, confess it to me. Show me. Because sometimes, guys, we have sins that we're, we're committing and we have no idea. You know, so sometimes we got to ask God. Because the Bible does say if a man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay, so cry out to the Father, man. It's time. This is time, guys. It's time to ascend. It's time to level up. It's time to stop being lukewarm. And um, you know, I know these a lot of these pastors, these churches, they're going to give you Bible verses and why you should title. It is just manipulation. Okay, they're using, they're twisting scriptures, and um, a lot of people, they just, you know, people perish for lack of knowledge. And like I said, I added some balance to this video. Someone's pouring to your spirit. Then you know you should give freely. You know, give whatever you you. Not, it doesn't have to be ten percent. Doesn't have to be fifty percent. Okay, it could be whatever. It could be whatever. Because there was a time in the Bible where um, a lady she gave to. Um, she only had like two pennies. It was like a penny or two penny, and she was more blessed than those who were giving more because that's all that she had. Okay, that's all that she had. So, um, I, I when people send me like cash, I was like, Mark, I'm sending my tithe, and you know, cash app has it where you can't message them back. And guys, please don't send me the tie. That, you know, if you want to, you want to help bless up my ministry because you know I got I got to buy camera equipment. I got to buy things that I need from my ministry. If you want to do that, never feel forced or obligated to do that. I don't. Please don't do that. Okay. Uh, it should be you're giving freely, not because you want a title. Okay. Now, of course, that like I said, if you bless other people, you're gonna be blessed. A lot of people, the reason why they're not blessed is because they have selfish energy. They're selfish. They don't like to give. They don't like to show love. You know, like even hitting the like button, which is free. People don't like to do that. Okay, they're very selfish, and that's the reason why they're not blessed. Because, like Proverbs chapter eleven twenty five says, to to, to uh, the soul that refreshes others himself will be refreshed. So I don't want to make this too long, guys. If you guys made it this far, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your testimony too in the description below. Have you experienced any churches who are manipulating you, using the form of witchcraft to get you to donate, to get you to tithe, um, and um, all that? So I love you guys so much, man. Y'all say blessed. Y'all take it easy. I'm out. Shalom. Peace.